Hey, I'm back. Remember me? I'm Pastor Paul, pastor of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Woodstock, Georgia. I want to offer my sincere thanks to all of you for the many ways that you supported me and Debbie during my recent hospitalization and recuperation. Uh, you are for us truly sisters and brothers in Christ, and we give thanks for you. Our COVID-19 task force is hard at work developing a playbook for the reopening of Good Shepherd. A big thank you to everyone who participated in the recent survey. It was very helpful for the task force. Stay alert for future communications as plans unfold. At this time, we are still unable to announce a date for resuming in-person worship. We will continue to provide weekly videoed services. Video Sunday School lessons for children can be found on our website. Thanks to everyone who continues to support Good Shepherd financially in these days that are financially stressful for many people. We're continuing with a number of outreach projects. You can support MUS Ministries with food contributions in the barrel on the front porch. You can support MUS Summer Lunches, a, a program with a long history at Good Shepherd. There is information about how to do that and about other ministries in today's worship bulletin. You can find that bulletin, which contains the worship liturgy and detailed announcements on our website, www.gslutheran.org. Now let's begin our worship.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God. We confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Your people here who have come to give you praise for the strength to live your word. Let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, and defend us. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and love and hope. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. Today's psalm is from chapter 65. Praise is due to you, O God in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. O you who answer prayer, 
to you all flesh shall come. When deeds of iniquity overwhelm us, you forgive our transgressions. Happy are those whom you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. By awesome deeds you answer us with deliverance, O God of our salvation. You are the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the furthest seas. By strength you have established the mountains. You are girded with might. You silence the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the peoples. Those who live at earth's furthest bounds are awed by your signs. You make the gateways of the morning and the evening shout with joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide the people with grain. For so you have prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges and softening it with showers and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with richness. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. Uh, this reading is from the book of Romans, chapter 8. There is therefore for now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God, who has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through His Spirit that dwells in you. The Word of the Lord. Speak, O Lord, as we come to you to receive. Matthew. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, 
since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun came, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a little while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. There are no adequate words for me to express how glad I am to be back with you, even virtually. For those of you who don't know, I suffered a heart attack on May 29th and had a triple bypass on June 4th. I can assure you that no one was more surprised than I was. I guess my love of desserts had to catch up with me sooner or later. My recovery has gone well, all things considered. My surgeon said that I could begin to ease back into work last week. So this is me easing back into work. Obviously, God decided to go easy on me as I began my return. I don't think there is another passage of scripture that needs less explanation than the parable of the sower. Jesus frequently used parables as a teaching tool. Some of them I'm still trying to understand, but the parable of the sower seems pretty obvious. And in case it doesn't, Jesus also took time to explain this parable, something he rarely did. According to Jesus, the parable is about the word of the kingdom. In Lutheranism, we define the word of God in three ways. Hopefully you know this. There is, of course, the written word of God, as contained in our scriptures. There is the living word of God, Jesus, as he is described in the first chapter of John's Gospel. And there is the proclaimed word of God, whenever God's people declare God's love in the world with words and deeds. It may be a sermon, though we all know that's not a sure thing. It may be a hymn or a praise song. It may be the prayer my friend prayed with me right before my surgery. It may be the ways that you are finding to declare God's love in the midst of so much brokenness in the world today. According to Jesus' parable, the word of God cast into the world will have amazing results. I, I really like Isaiah's insight into God's word that we heard today. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Of course, the purpose of the living word Jesus was that the world might be saved, a purpose that was accomplished. And the 
two big purposes of the written and spoken word are law and gospel. Law is when God's word reveals our sin to us and our need for forgiveness. Gospel is when God's word reveals God's grace to us. I've been dramatically reminded lately of how personal God's word and its purposes can be. My hospitalization included no visitors, as everyone does these days. Thankfully, Debbie and I could FaceTime and talk on the phone, but for 10 days, every person I encountered was a stranger. I experienced my favorite parable in God's written word, the Good Samaritan, in whole new ways. It's the story in Luke that I preached my first official sermon on years and years and years ago. I've revisited it frequently all these years since. Usually when I hear or read that story, I hope I am like the Samaritan who showed mercy to the beaten man. Sometimes when I hear or read that story, however, I see how I have been one of those who passed by the man in need and did not show mercy when I could have. Both of those insights, I believe, are proposed by the story. Until my recent heart attack, however, I don't remember ever identifying with the beaten man before, helpless and needy. God's purpose with God's word then was to open my eyes, I think. When the mercy of strangers is all you've got, you can learn some things about yourself and about the world. Sometimes I found the purpose of God's written and spoken word and even the presence of the living word Jesus to be calmness. It's really hard to hear that you've had a heart attack when you are alone. It's hard to hear that a stranger is going to crack open your chest and reupholster your heart when there is no one to hold your hand. Each time I was overwhelmed, I recited the words of my favorite psalm again and again. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. For years, I've told children and confirmation students and graduates. I, I think I even noted it in a community publication recently, how important it is to know some of God's written word by memory for when you need it. There were many days during my hospitalization and recuperation that I turned to those verses to remember whose I am. And each time I found strength and comfort. I think that was the purpose of that word of God for me during those scary days. I can't tell you how much I looked forward to our online worship services while I was hospitalized and recuperating. Those services certainly weren't prepared with me specifically in mind, but each time I heard things that I believe God wanted me to hear and experienced things that strengthened me. How I looked forward to seeing your faces and knowing the love of our community. How I looked forward to the songs and the prayers and the scripture readings. 
I remember being quite moved one Sunday to sing I Love to Tell the Story. It's a song I've known my whole life and sung a million times. But as I lay in bed and listened, I thought about how much I really do love to tell the story of God's love. And I pray that I might be able to continue doing that. And here I am. I'm easing back into things. I hate my new diet. I am never hungry for the th things that are on the acceptable list. I'm always hungry for God's word though, written, living, or spoken. I know that it shall accomplish that which God proposes and will succeed in the thing for which God sent it. Amen. into unity with one another and the whole creation. Let us pray 
for our shared world. Gracious God, your word has been sown in many ways and places. We pray for missionaries and newly planted congregations around the world. Inspire us by their witness to the faith that we share. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, the mountains and hills burst into song, and the trees and the fields clap their hands in praise. We pray for the birds and the animals who make their home in the trees, and the land stripped bare by deforestation. Empower us to sustainly use what you have given us. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Reigning God, we pray for our nation's leaders. Increase their desire for justice and equity. We pray for our enemies. Bridge the chasms that divide and guide authorities to keep a deep and lasting peace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Abiding God, care for all who are in need, including those on our continuing prayers list. For those who are doubting, renew faith. For those who are worrying, provide release. For those who are struggling, ease burdens. For those in fear, give hope. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Renewing God, revive your church in this place. Nourish and nurture the seeds you have planted that we might grow as your disciples. Replace what has been depleted. Sustain our ministries and deepen relationships with a wider community. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for all who have died. Comfort us in the sure and certain hope of resurrection. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those far too deep for words through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The peace of the Lord be with you. God's be with you all. God's peace. Peace be with you. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the Creator, Jesus, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen.
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.